Hey guys, Mikey from Temporary Software.com. Thanks for watching. Uh, Q&A time again. Um, load of questions to get through. There's loads I missed um, before. Um, and I'll start off with uh, Jacob Baker's question from last week, which I forgot to answer. Um, and that was, uh, do I prefer Navy Seals or Rangers? Um, I've never worked with either, so I don't know. I've met a Navy Seal, nice guy. Um, that's outside of the military. Um, and that's as far as my experience goes, uh, to be quite honest with you. So, I don't know, they each have their own specific job to do. And um, that's it, really. Um, Marty Pino from YouTube asked, How do you remove spray paint? Uh, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can scrub it off with uh, something abrasive like wet and dry uh, sandpaper, you know, really fine sandpaper. You can sort of rub it down that way. Um, that you've got to be really careful because obviously, once you get rid of the paint, you'll start going down to the, uh, the actual. Uh, primary finish on the gun which obviously you don't want to damage uh, unless you would do if you want to take it all the way back to the uh, bare metal of the, of the gun then you know no problem with Krylon and paints like that you can they do come off quite easily with uh, paint thinner and a lot of elbow grease so get some paint thinner rub it down um, scouring um, pads that you use for doing your dishes with a bit of paint thinner works quite well uh, but again you've got to be a bit care you've got to be careful not to take it too far you can also use for cryodon I've used um, a nylon brush head on my Dremel to remove Krylon uh, but again you've got to go with a low speed for that and be really careful not to start damaging the original finish of the gun um, unless you obviously want to take it down if you want to take it down a bare met bare metal and you've got a Dremel just get a wire, wire uh, a wire brush head and uh, use that and you'll, you'll, you'll get it all down. Termi from YouTube says, favorite S or field type? Um, for me, something that's got a mixture of woodland and buildings and open areas. Um, there's a site, I've played that a couple of times, I've been on there, I've been on exercise there a few times, uh, called Bramley here in the UK. And um, it's quite thick woodland, but there's, there's some big buildings around there as well. So you can, uh, you know, you can use a, utilize a lot of different infantry skills. Um, it's a great site. I, I, I like sites like that where it's a little bit mixed, um, followed closely by urban sites. Um, you know, that, to say I have a definitive favourite would probably be wrong, but I think a good woodland site with a mix of buildings kind of uh, sort of pips it to the post there. Uncapping Badger from YouTube says, are there any retailers that sell the LH5A2 with the Riz pre-installed? Uh, most should offer, or most decent retailers will offer, offer that service. Um, all you need to do, I know uh, Just Cause will um, would do this for you if you if you gave them a call. Give whatever retailer you want to use. If you're local to Just Cause, they don't stock the LH5A2, but uh, it's probably something they can get in. Uh, and if they can't, they would, um, they'd uh, direct you to where you can get it. But most retailers, most good retailers, you should just be able to call them up, tell them what gun it is you want. So tell them you want the L85A2, tell them you want the um, the Riz for it as well, and then ask them to install it for you uh, at the shop. Uh, might be a charge, probably will be a, a fee for the work, uh, an extra fee, but uh, you're gonna get that done for you. Aside from that, it's actually not that difficult to swap over. I don't know, I've not had to swap it myself, but. I've done a little bit of um, searching on YouTube and there's plenty of videos out there. So if you wanna, before you buy it, uh, get on YouTube and uh, have a little look, see if uh, you know you, you feel it's something that you can do yourself. It doesn't look that difficult. Um, so, but yeah, most retailers should should be able to offer that service for you. Jake Brown on YouTube asks, FN Fal all variants or the H and K G3? Um, probably the G3 because I've used that a little bit more but to be honest I've not used either weapon system that extensively um, I've used the G3 a little bit more than uh, Fowls um, in fact Fowls I've only really sort of had a little experience taster of so we shall say never done any major training or anything like that on them um, so probably the G3 just because I'm a little bit more familiar with that system. If, if you're talking real steel, if you're talking airsoft, I've not used either in airsoft. Um, I've had a go, someone, someone had a G3, a custom, uh, a while back, and it was a pretty good bit of kit. 
Opinion on the LL1A1 from Aries, that's from uh, Jet Brown as well. Um, great bit of kit. The SLR is a little bit before my time with uh, in the military, but it's good that um, they, I know it's uh, been a sought after um, weapon system within uh, reenactors for a while. So um, it's good. I had a little play with it a couple of weeks back, and uh, build quality from Aries is always good anyway. But um, you know, it was quite nice. It was, uh, Quite, quite good, good uh, bit of kit. Benji music from YouTube again asks uh, reference the tag innovation grenade launcher rounds. Uh, these things shouldn't be sold as airsoft tool. I've seen people uh, take shrapnel wounds and things like that. Uh, yeah, I know someone that was wounded, uh, got a uh, split on his chin from a ricochet from one of these. Um, so definitely see where you're coming from. Personally, I think they're a great bit of kit, but I do get why a lot of sites don't allow them. Um, they're a, they're basically a grenade flying through the air, but they fly with more force than you're gonna you're gonna throw a grenade. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, as I said, I think they're a great bit of kit. Unfortunately, I don't think a lot of there are a lot of people in the uh, airsoft community that I wouldn't trust with one of these. Um, but I've also seen them used in game uh, quite responsibly and to great effect. I think CAG. Um, may have used them on one of their events. Uh, I'm not sure, but I know there's, there's some Milsim organizers out there that are using them for effect when used by the DS. Um, and I think that's a great idea. You know, add, adds to a good effect. And uh, if they're used correctly and safely, you know, they're uh, they're a good bit of kit. Um, hopefully, safety issues will be improved on those. Um, Nate Higgers from YouTube says, do you think I could paint or draw on a design on my M16 using a Sharpie or paintbrush, or should I just use spray paint? Uh, absolutely. The good thing about painting your gun is that the only limit is your own imagination, really. Um, I know a guy who painted his sniper rifle using Humbrol model paint for um, Airfix models, and he literally dipped his finger in and dabbed it on. Uh, in a pattern and um, when you get up close and you look at it it looks a bit of shit but from a distance which is what it's designed to um, for uh, it looks great it, it works well so do whatever you want do what uh, you know if you've only got paint brushes and you can't afford to get some spray paint or whatever crack on give it a go the good thing is if you mess up with paint have some paint thinner on hand and then if you, if you make an error you can just quickly bit of paint thinner, wipe it down and then start again, not a problem. Jason Hancock says, do you need CO2 for the Walter PPQ that I reviewed? Um, the one I reviewed was a green gas one, but you can get a CO2 version, so um, either or, depending on which one you get. Spine Lizard720 Spine from YouTube says, do you need gas for the TM Glock 17? Yeah, it was a gas blowback gun, um, so yeah, you definitely need gas uh, of some sort. Wu Helen asks, um, on the MG42, can you swap out the rear stock and the muzzle for real parts? Not entirely sure, to be honest. Um, I don't have, I, I'm not a, um, a, a knowledge freak on the uh, MG42, to be completely honest. Um, I imagine you probably can with a little bit of work. Um, you can swap anything out with uh, with a with a bit of bit of Dremelin or custom modification. But looking at some photos and things like that, I think the, the MG42 comes with a buffer, uh, some sort of buffer on the uh, rear stock. So that might play a part in attaching it. So um, best best to get in touch with a retailer and um, and ask them um, and see what they say. But that's it for this week. Um, if you've got any further questions for next week's video. Stick them in the comment section below. Um, don't forget I'm on Instagram, Facebook, uh, obviously YouTube and uh, Twitter. Fire questions away and I'll um, I'll get them answered as best I can. If it's your first time to my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Uh, so if you like what you see, please do hit that subscribe button. I do appreciate every single one of you guys that does that. Uh, so big thumbs up for that. As always, um, thanks for watching. See you next time.